So as frustrated as I am, and I'm sitting here on Tuesday, I have never missed a reaction video. So we're going to talk about the Packers and maybe look ahead a little bit on this, the No Horsing Around podcast. Thank you. Okay, you guys. So I have gone back and forth. It's Tuesday. The game was Sunday at noon. The horrific game. And I was like, do I want to talk about it? We're sitting here at Tuesday now. There's other news, obviously. DeForest Buckner's on IR. Um, We've got the game coming up against the Bears. I just did a spot on Do You uh, Believe in Monsters, which is from the Believe Network for the Bears. Amazing guys. Go check it out when it drops. Um, So I've done that, but I've never missed. In the history of No Horsing Around, we have never missed a reaction, whether it was right after the game or an hour after the game or two days after the game. And I don't care how many views it gets, but it's one of those things where I've got to talk, right? I mean, what the bleep happened for the Colts in Lambeau? Colts lose 16-10. Malik Willis wins his first game. Malik Willis has his, throws his first touchdown, throws his first 100-yard game. 122 yards, 12-14, and a touchdown. What the bleep? Six rushes for 41 yards. What? Josh Jacobs, 32 carries for 151 yards. Huh? Prior to the season starting, we discussed the fact that the D-line was one of the bright spots. You had Buckner and Stewart. You brought back Tyquan Lewis. You brought in Roquan Davis. You drafted uh, Leatu Latu. You had Quiddy Pay. You know, you you had a deep D-line. Run defense was something you did well. And this, after this game, you're you're giving up, I think it's 237 yards a game. But you let, you know what they're going to do. And you let them do it. So, the storyline this week so far, listening to Kevin Bowen and listening to Jake Query and reading up on different articles, has been Gus Bradley and his stupidity and his inability to change his game plan. What you should have done in this game is pressure Malik. Put the pre- He's never proven to be an NFL quarterback, right? Put him into panic mode, force indecision, force bad throws. That's it. You didn't touch him. And by and also, you gave up 261 yards rushing at the same time. You let them dictate. Now, the score will say the game was close, 16-10, right? And we're talking about the defensive side of the ball, right? It'll say it's close. It never felt that close. Obviously, you have the missed field goal by Matt Gay that could have made it 16-13. So at the end, when you're driving and you have to throw that Hail Mary, which resulted in Anthony Richardson's third interception on the day, you may have not had been doing that. You'd been playing for the field goal, which you were getting closer, right, to field goal range when he threw that Hail Mary. You wouldn't have been having to do that, right? And on, on the offensive side of the ball, let's rant and rave for a second there, right? Anthony Richardson, why are we throwing the ball 34 times? Completing, what, 50%? Around, I think exactly 50% of his passes, 17 to 34, two of four, one touchdown, and, and three picks, right? Toss out the last pick. I don't give two shits about the last pick, right? So, hell, Mary gets popped up and the dude catches it. The guy's like, I'm going to keep this ball. This is my first pick. It's a meaningless pick, right? It, it just looks bad on the stat line at the end of the day. His, w- the one thing that I've taken from his interceptions is he owned up to them, at least, unlike. A quarterback in Tennessee who said, we, you know, we need to not turn the ball over. No, you as the quarterback need to play better. Own it. And Richardson did. Hey, that first one, I floated back in the pocket. I threw off my back foot. I floated the ball and it got picked. Second one, I tried to play with anticipation. I thought I tried to look a receiver over to A.D. Mitchell or look a corner over to A.D. Mitchell. And I tried to anticipate that he was going to move and then he didn't. And I forced it and it looked really bad. And that one's on me too. So he he took responsibility, four rushes, 37 yards. That's okay. I mean, he wasn't really – it didn't dictate a big running game for him. 
it was not, it was, you know, it's the roller coaster. You know, you go up, you go down, right? Um, hopefully, some of this is rectified as we go into the game against the Bears because hopefully you're getting Josh Downs back. Um, his connection with A.D. Mitchell is curious. You know, one catch, 30 yards. There's more meat, the way more meat on the bone during this game. A.D. had some bad drops, some ones where I think he's still getting used to, like Alec Pierce said in the first game, don't slow down. The ball's going to be there. It doesn't look like it because he throws it so effortlessly, but you have to learn you're going to have to run underneath these balls. They're going to be there. He's going to put them there on these deep balls because he's missed a couple in the first game. He missed a couple in the second game. I think that's going to develop. That's going to be there, right? Jonathan Taylor. Let's let's talk about this for a second, right? Jonathan Taylor has 12 carries for 103 yards and three quarters, and he didn't touch the ball and didn't touch the field in the fourth quarter. Why? Is the biggest question. It's the, it's one of the biggest questions outside of can Gus Bradley stop being stupid that is going around in Indianapolis right now, right? It is. So why? Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter both said today that the game dictated that they go more pass heavy in the fourth quarter, and that's not leaning towards – they didn't say this, but that's not leaning towards Jonathan Taylor's strengths of pass protection and receiving. There's also the fact that he dropped the ball on one of the receptions, didn't pick up the fourth down on one of them. Maybe that's part of it. Um, But he's probably, on the offensive side of the ball, he is absolutely your best player. He's your best weapon right now. He needs to be on the field in some capacity. Find a way. I don't care. Put him on the field. Use him as a decoy if you have to. I don't care. Put him there. Okay. The other takeaway I have offensive side of the ball on this game is you have to support Richardson, right? Like the Colts receiving core has one of the highest drop rates right now. Pittman dropped balls. Pierce slipped. Pierce has been the bright spot, right? A.D. Mitchell has dropped balls. The tight ends are non-existent right now in this offense. They're dropping balls. You have to get on the same page. Going into the next game, you have to get on the same page. I want to burn the tape. I don't want to talk about it anymore. It now is on to the Bears, and we're going to talk about that on the next episode. Okay, you guys, like, share, follow, subscribe, all those great things. Follow on X, Threads, uh, Facebook, Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, all those amazing things. I love you, and even though they're 0-2, Colts love you. See you guys in a bit. I'm out.